After effectively banning Chinese immigration, America needed a new cheap labor force. Japanese men had been entering the U.S. as indentured laborers as early as 1880, but immigration surged to around 42,000 arrivals between 1901 and 1907. The Japanese made a conscious effort to assimilate into American culture, knowing full well about existing anti-Chinese sentiment. This backfired badly. In 1900, during a San Francisco rally for the renewal of the Chinese Exclusion Act, the mayor of the American Federation of Labor mentions that the assumed virtue of the Japanese, in essence their partial adoption of American customs, makes them the more dangerous as competitors. McClatchy, a well-known newspaper editor at the time and campaigner of Asian racism through the Chinese to all the way to the Filipinos, had this to say about the Japanese. He racially characterized them as thrift, industry-driven, low standards of living, Uh, general use of women as laborers, regardless of their condition as prospective mothers, and add some weird eugenics mix into there by saying that this drone-like behavior wasn't a strain on their nervous system. So this characterization of this unstoppable plague devoid of humanity sounds quite familiar, doesn't it? Like that, nobody like in fights like in Korea fighting the Chinese. That's who we're really fighting there, or Vietnam. That's, that's, do you think freaking? I mean, they're like they're, they're they're conscious and real people, but when they get into a fight, they all sync up and are robots and have no fear. I mean, mm-hmm. you're talking about psychotic killers you're fighting, and so Asians are about the most fearless killers there are. You're like the Mongols, like the history any of, of them. The Mongols, Dude, you get the, I mean, once Asians go to war, it's yeah. like they do not. They're it's in fact they're not even crazed going wild in a battle. They're like robots coming to kill you. Hostility soon escalated in 1905 with boycotts of Japanese businesses in an effort to drive out laborers organized by the Asiatic Exclusion League. A concerned Japan, worried about their own image, negotiated a gentleman's agreement with the US in 1907. It banned new immigration of Japanese laborers, but allowed for family reunification of people currently residing in the US. Because of these bans, the only viable way Japanese men could get married was to find a wife through the picture bride practice, essentially an arranged marriage. The matchmaker, usually a relative, would find a woman in their hometown and allow the prospective bride and groom to exchange photos. If both parties were happy, the man would agree to pay for the passage of his bride and would be married once she arrived in the US. This practice further convinced the white populace that Japanese women were being trafficked as prostitutes. Only pressure from the Japanese government in an effort to save face ensured that picture brides were considered legitimate in American society. As Japan gained power, Americans started fearing the possibility of Japanese colonization. The Alien Land Law was passed in 1913 to prohibit quote-unquote aliens from gaining citizenship and from owning agricultural land. 
Asians were crafty and able to circumvent this by leasing land in their children's name who were born in the US and automatically gave them US citizenship. Therefore, Japanese women in particular were seen as a threat due to their ability to procreate. Every girl is thoroughly drilled in the doctrine that should she become a picture bride in America or an immigrant to other lands, her loyal duty to her emperor is to have as many children as possible so that the foreigner's land may become in time a possession of Japan. The dangerous reproductive potential of Japanese as well as Chinese and later other Asian women made the US revise their immigration policies again. The ladies agreement placed a total ban on picture brides in 1920. These policies also affected Korea since Korea was annexed by the Japanese in 1910 and Korean refugees who didn't identify as subjects of Japan. In 1924, the Immigration Act made aliens ineligible to citizenship and banned all non-whites from immigrating. This meant that even foreign-born spouses lost their citizenship rights. With bans on Chinese, Japanese, Korean and Indian immigration, the unaffected Filipinos were now sought after to work on sugar plantations in Hawaii and do backbreaking stoop labor, which involved picking lettuce and asparagus. The Philippines was annexed by the US in 1898, granting Filipinos the right of passage to the US during the 1924 Immigration Act. Like every other immigrant before them, Filipinos were antagonized, especially the men. During the 1929 Watsonville riots, a 400-man mob lay siege on a Filipino dance hall after a photo depicting a Filipino man and a young white woman embracing was published in the local paper. Mounting racism pressured the US to bar Filipinos from entering the country in the form of the Tidings McDuffie Act of 1934. It granted nominal independence to the Philippines in order to enable exclusion. For 37 years, America has ruled the 7,000 odd islands which make up the Philippine archipelago. Now, following the precedent set by Great Britain with her colonies, the Filipinos are to be given the opportunity of governing themselves for an experimental period of 10 years and President Quetzal becomes their first ruler. The US wanted to keep the people out but welcome the trade. Philippine exports remained duty free, yet a 50 person quota was put in place for Filipinos seeking arrival in the US, the lowest of any group. Suddenly subject to the 1924 immigration laws, California-born Natty Ellerin lost her citizenship because she was married to a Filipino-born man named Flaviano Ellerin, who was also considered an alien. This was one of the earliest known cases that demonstrate how Asian American women's status in society was inextricably linked to the Asian men they married. In 1935, the Filipino Repatriation Act incentivized Filipinos residing in the US to voluntarily leave on the condition that they were never allowed to return. <laughs> 